Well, hello and a very warm welcome to Business Today TV. I am Chetan Bhutani. Today, I am joined by a stellar guest. Uh, Maruti has, of course, come out with its numbers, a record-breaking numbers, especially for the financial year, especially in exports. And Mr. Shashank Shrivastava, Executive Director, joins us for a quick chat. Thank you so much, Mr. Shrivastava, for joining us. First question, 1.70 lakh crores uh, in uh, March 2022. Uh, tell us about the numbers and uh, the performance of the company. Uh, yeah, okay. So first, let me uh, talk about the industry first. Industry uh, volumes for this year have been about 30.7 lakhs, uh, which when you compare with last year, number of 27.11 lakhs uh, comes to about 13.2% uh, growth. So that's a very good growth considering that we have had the issues with uh, semiconductor supply in the industry. However, when you look at this number in a larger time frame, uh, so this number uh, of uh, uh, about five years back was similar. It, five years back in 16, 17, the number was 30.47 lakh. So when we look at uh, the recent past, the last year and the year before, it seems to be a good growth. But five years back, we had similar numbers. So that's something which we need, also need to keep in mind. That is an overall industry. Second, what we observed this year um, uh, is that uh, there was a, uh, the, the SUV percentage as of the overall market increased to almost 40% from 32%. Hatches uh, were around uh, 38, 39% from the earlier 45%, uh, and sedans were about 10%. That's the second trend. And the third thing, which was very visible, was the great demand, which seems to have come for CNG vehicles. And CNG, that's, I think, a response to the, the higher fuel prices that we saw throughout the year last year. And also because the CNG running cost, therefore, is about one third the running cost of petrol and diesel. So, three broad trends which we see. Uh, and uh, of course, March uh, figures uh, you mentioned. Overall, in exports this year, we did a record 238,000 plus vehicles, which is the highest ever which we have done in export. Uh, and that is, of course, a cause of uh, good celebration for us. We are quite proud of that uh, achievement, keeping in mind the Make in India um, theme for our, uh, which our government has said, and that Atmanirbhar uh, Bharat we have been talking about. Right. Mr. Srivastav, you also pointed about uh, the numbers and the overall perspective. Uh, the dispatch to yeah. dealers, however, has been a bit shaky. Uh, what's the reason behind that? Uh, that's because of the availability of the semiconductor uh, issue. Uh, so okay. you would have seen that while on the on the uh, on the demand side, the parameters are very strong in terms of inquiries and bookings. But in terms of uh, dispatches, as you just mentioned, a little weaker because of the uh, availability issue. And uh, that is uh, that means that we our pending bookings have increased. In fact, the pending bookings have increased to almost 2.7 lakhs now. So that's a fairly substantial number. And our focus is how to uh, deliver these vehicles to the consumer as quickly as possible. Uh, so, what is the waiting time currently for uh, the, the 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 basic models, which are usually high in demand, the five top demand demand in demand vehicles? Uh, how much is the waiting time and are you look, how are you looking forward to reduce the waiting time for these models? Uh, yeah, so if you look at the overall number, I gave you 2.7 lakh and we make about a 1.25 to 1.35 lakh every month. So it's roughly a nine weeks type of waiting on an average. But of course, it varies from model to model. Currently, for example, Artiga has got a four months, four and a half month waiting period. Uh, of course, uh, within that also CNG versus uh, gasoline is also different. Uh, CNG uh, vehicles have a much larger waiting periods. Uh, so starting from four months to even higher and uh, six or seven months for the Artiga. So model wise, it varies as also fuel type wise. But overall broad numbers, I just gave you uh, 2.7 lakh. And that means about a nine weeks basic on an average. Absolutely. Mr. Shivastha, uh you spoke about, before I move on to the other set of numbers, you mentioned about SUVs segment rising substantially in the market. Uh, yeah. Agreed that Maruti is little lagging behind in that segment, but any plans going forward in this financial year to uh, gear up and match that segment quality? Yeah, so surely uh, SUV is a segment which we have to look at very closely. And I've mentioned that before, as you said. If you look at last year, for example, in the non-SUVs uh, market, Mauti's market share is 66%. It's the highest we have achieved ever in that uh, non-SUV segment. But the SUV segment itself has been growing where our market share is not so good, largely because we have only two products, Brezza and S-Cross, whereas the industry has 46 SUVs. So we have to compete two of our models with 46 in, in the total 46 numbers. In the. So there is obviously a case 
for strengthening that portfolio. And that's what we have mentioned. And that's what we intend to do going forward. Why don't you get the Jimny into India as soon as possible? Yeah, so so that's an option which uh, we have said exists. And uh, we have taken uh, market feedback. And currently, we are evaluating uh, the marketing plans for it. And as soon as it is finalized, uh, Chetan, uh, you'll be the first person to know. Well, it's, it'll be an honor to drive that vehicle. Uh, so moving on to the other numbers, sir. Uh, exports have been re- at record high, but uh, uh, the chip shortage has uh, affected the domestic demand. Uh, however, the exports are very good. So uh, any reason as to how why the exports are, uh, uh, like, are very aggressive and the domestic uh, supply is affected? So it all depends on uh, the different uh, t- countries and the specs. Uh, and depending on that, uh, what has been the uh, what is the requirement of uh, different type of chips? So it's a complex uh, sort of thing. I know what you are referring to is a very common question. How come yeah. that is affected? Whereas this thing, uh, so it, it's it's not uh, very simple as that. If we have to look at country wise, spec wise, model wise. And that is where we find, and obviously we try to maximize wherever possible our production, maybe adjust uh, variant-wise production. Now we are also looking at spec-wise adjustment of volume. And that is how you see the actual numbers. Right. Uh, Any information about the price hike? Because since Jan 2021, there have been four price hikes, uh, uh, increase about 9% or 9% uh any price hike in the new future that that, that you're considering yes yeah, so we are uh, what... cost is of course affecting the outlook because uh, 75 to 78 percent of the raw materials cost is uh very important in the in a vehicle so any comment on the price rise yeah so absolutely you're right 75 to 78 percent of the total cost structure of a auto oem is a material cost so changes in material costs uh, obviously impact the profitability and the cost structure the most and you are right, uh, the commodity prices have been stubbornly high for the last one and a half years. And that is the reason why we have taken four price highs, but it's not sufficient to cover the increased commodity prices. So uh, while we were expecting commodity prices to soften a little bit, they haven't. And that is the reason why we are looking at it, uh, monitoring the situation very closely to consider if there is a requirement for a price hike. Uh, you know, for us, the price hike is the last option. Because for us, uh, we, as market leaders, we are very conscious of our responsibility for volumes in the industry as well. So, but then we cannot we just look at the volumes and not uh, look at profitability, or we cannot just look at profitability and not to be concerned about the volume. So, it's a very fine line, and we are carefully weighing our options, and we will be shortly taking a decision in this regard. Ashishan, san by what time? Uh, any timeline? Uh, the uh, the, the 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 customers can expect a price hike. Any any rough time. I know I know you don't basically reveal such details, but to, to ensure that customers know about such a thing, any timeline that you can probably give a question to them for. So so that's what I was saying. We are still examining it. So okay, uh, still, uh, right. uh, okay. yeah. So once uh, once we come to a decision, obviously we have to inform the stock exchange and then subsequently make a public announcement as well. Right. Uh, Sushant sir, how is the outlook for the new financial year looking like and what are the new hot launches planned up? Yeah, so the new financial year, uh, there's a lot of optimism, first of all, let me tell you, because uh, the auto sales, as you know, is dependent on the economy. It's a very close close correlation with the economic growth and economic growth is expected to be good uh, this year. Um, so uh, we can expect uh, with some optimism increase in sales. Uh, I was at a Siam uh, panel discussion a few uh, weeks back, and the consensus seems to be that the volumes will be roughly 33.6 uh, to 35.2 lakhs. That's a growth of roughly about uh, between 13 to 16%. So that's the sort of uh, projections which are being made. However, there are uh, challenges which have also been flagged, and uh, there are six of them which have been flagged. First is, of okay. course, the COVID situation should not reoccur. I mean, it's possible that you can have a COVID situation again. Second is, uh, it's not gone away. Second is the, um, the, the inflation and corresponding increase in interest rates. Uh, and mm-hmm. therefore, the negative effect it might have on liquidity. Remember, 80% of car retails happen uh, uh, through, through financing. Third is uh, high fuel prices, which uh, it can negatively impact uh, sentiments. Fourth is the high commodity prices which can reflect in higher cost of acquisition. Fifth is uh, you can have higher cost of acquisition because of government uh, uh, regulations, etc. 
and and finally of course the supply situation itself which we discussed uh, where it is possible that you can have a continued disruption on supply because of various issues uh, uh, involved with the semiconductor and other components right uh, moving on to my last set of questions shashank sir uh, you said about six launches uh, any hint to us to first launch of the vehicle for the financial year uh, did i mention six launches i did not because I, okay. I i i don't uh, yeah because forward uh, looking uh, thing right. on, okay uh, must have been a mr 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 okay yeah 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 i think you are referring to some social media uh, slides which are going around so maybe uh, but it's <laughs> difficult for me to deny or confirm that uh, okay. because uh, you know we, we cannot really comment on future sure. uh, product plan or give the but yes i can tell you that maruti suzuki uh, we have the largest portfolio uh, across all segments and uh, we uh, we understand the requirement of consumers uh, we believe that's one of the reasons why we have a high market share for all these years and i think we will be very aggressive in introducing new products and also upgrading our existing products so that right. the philosophy is still continues right sir i would like to just point out one thing that two wheeler sales have been down for a record low uh, because yeah. uh, two, low two wheeler sales are always a sign of rural economy not picking up tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 cities uh, not going forward for a purchasing of two wheeler are you seeing yeah. such an impact in, of the rural economy uh, low sales in your uh, in your company's profile with respect to actually no particular segment models actually no because this time also we saw rural economy, rural sales picking up uh, i mean growth is faster higher than the urban uh, one we don't see that and i think uh, one of the uh, we can treat the two markets differently the two wheeler market i am not an expert on two wheelers but uh, what right. i gather from my uh, different uh, talks with uh, the the stakeholders is that uh, when it be a four to be a six transition as a percentage of the vehicle cost the two wheeler cost has gone up much higher as a percentage mm. of the of, of the cost and uh, it all depends on how the demand would depend on how elastic uh, the demand is with respect to price the price elasticity is much higher at the lower end and that is one reason why two wheelers may not have grown and also the running cost because the fuel prices are high the sensitivity to running cost for two wheeler is much higher and this yeah. could be the reasons why why two wheelers have not grown we haven't seen as much in four wheeler although within four wheeler yes at the entry level we have seen some sort of a stress because uh, i think the prices or the cost of acquisition has gone up faster than the uh, the the increase in income levels and that is where the debate i think is there but overall rural has done uh, uh, better than urban even in this year you know plus i also feel that uh, buying a vehicle is more of a sentimental choice and a good uh, good omen for the family or for the particular individual and there's such global news and uh inflation is probably affecting that purchase choice but a uh, second last question to you uh, how has uh, how with respect to the uh, war uh, how has the demand for uh, and the supply chain management for your uh, raw materials has been because last we spoke uh, the ukraine russia war and the other things were affecting supply of the key raw materials uh, where has that been standing now yeah so I, actually i'm not very familiar with the actual effect immediate okay. effect doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be there immediate effect is not there but i'm sure because uh, supply chain uh, lines are all global now so as, if this thing persists for a long time i'm sure there would be some effect uh, uh, both on the pr- prices as well as the availability itself but at the moment immediate thing is that it's not but i must repeat that uh, maybe our supply chain guys are the best people to uh, reply to this uh, type sure. of question uh, so the government is in final stages of implementing the law for six airbags uh, in all vehicles uh, how are you anticipating that and by how much uh, would that lead to increase in prices for the vehicles so 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 obviously uh, the the cost of acquisition goes up because uh, the airbags cost obviously has to be added and at the moment there are two airbags so cost of four airbags is the additional cost uh, but of course safety is a big priority for uh, uh, for us and uh, we will definitely uh, we we will obviously follow whatever the government uh, uh, mandates and uh, yes uh, the cost of acquisition going up would probably uh, affect the the uh, the uh, segments Uh, which are you know at the lower end, and that is obviously a concern which must be weighing uh, in the minds of all uh, industry and even in the government. I am sure 
they must be looking at uh, how it affects the demand pattern itself can you give us a percentage uh, like some uh, range in between a rupee how much uh, hike would it be for adding four extra airbags um uh, i'm not sure about the uh, cost of each airbag but i if you ask me as an estimate as an industry uh, this thing right. i would expect uh, the cost uh, 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 up to be about 12 13000 uh, rupees purely out of uh, my general knowledge, the, i would say sure sure uh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 point taken and then yeah. my last question to you would be that there were concerns and there were various reports citing that suzuki might directly invest uh into the ev venture and not through Mar- maruti suzuki india limited uh are these reports true and uh, if yes uh, what is the plan going ahead and how would it be done uh so chetan i am actually not uh, in uh, I, i i don't really know this uh so i will have to uh, check and get back to you on this uh, probably with our finance people and also our corporate uh, uh, guys uh, to know the exact uh, to reply to be able to reply to this uh, question which you have asked you so mr shashank sir always a pleasure speaking to you candidate as always thank you so much for joining us for business today tv uh we thank wish you all the best for the new financial year and maybe get to see more and more of maruti vehicles being launched thank you very much chetan if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe 